Cliff Gallup was the lead guitar player with Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps. His stint with the, as a Blue Cap wasn't very long. He recorded a total of, of 35 songs in 1956. But those recordings and those solos and that sound is part of, he cre helped create the architecture for rockabilly guitar that people are still inspired to this day around the world. It's a, a replica of his um, 1954 uh, Gretsch Duo Jet, Dynasonic pickups uh, with the stationary arm, just like the way Cliff's was back in the day. The logo where it was positioned during that time period. It's heavily chambered, which means it's extremely light. And uh, the grip is from old school, from the uh, uh, how they made them way back then. And it's a, a wonderful guitar, which features Cliff Gallup's signature up on the headstock. For those guys that are aware of Dick Cliff, Dig Cliff Gallup, you got to have one of these. It's a wonderful sounding guitar. Uh, here's here's something else that's new here. Another tribute model we did. Uh, this one is in white pearl. This is the Dwayne Eddy signature model guitar. It's in white pearl. You notice it's got brown shell binding around the appointments around the body. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous looking guitar. It's a white pearl color with uh, Dynasonic pickups and a true arc bridge that matches the radius of the fretboard. And, uh, and of course, Dwayne Eddy's the king of twang, and he created all those early recordings with our Gretsch guitar. Uh, we're paying tribute, of course, to Dwayne Eddy. It's offered in this pearl white and also in a black lacquer with aged white binding. Wonderful guitar. Vintage Select, so this is the uh, 58 White Penguin right here. Uh, full two inch deep. It's uh, heavily chambered as well. Uh, it features TV Jones pickups. Gorgeous, gorgeous guitar, white with all the gold appointments. Uh, Grover Imperial tuners and uh, banjo armrests like they did back in the day. Of course, with the two-position tone switch, a lot of people are mystified by this by the second switch over here. And I'll quickly briefly tell you about what that is. Of course, the selector switch that's closest to the strap button is a regular three-position uh, pickup selector. But this switch right here is a tone circuit switch. When it's centered in, the, in this position, it's completely out of the circuit, so the guitar is as bright as it's going to be. When you push it down, it's, uh, uh, it's like as if you had a rotary tone control on about nine. It just rolls off the top end. And then when you flip it all the way up, it's like a rotary tone control on about six. So it's very, it's very bassy, very jazzy. So yeah, and, and a lot of this stuff was uh, directly connected to, uh, to Chet Atkins, who wanted to be able to, instead of fishing for his, you know, tones on a rotary tone control, he wanted to, on a fly, be able to go to you know, specific tone settings. And that's where this all comes from. Beautiful guitar. Particular one, it, it's reminiscent of Malcolm Young, of course, but it's not a Malcolm Young model. We have a, a we have a picture here. As well. Oh yeah, but, but yeah. it looks very similar to Malcolm Young's guitar. Of course, the the, the the guitar that he he played through his entire career, it was originally red. That's that's the the essence of this. But it's not a Malcolm Young signature model that's yet to come. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, a '62 uh, double jet, uh, Firebird red, TV Jones pickups. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful guitar with the wooden headstock face, Gretsch logo, Bigsby tailpiece, and again with the mystery tone switch there. Very, very cool rock and roll guitar right there. How about us do here? It's a 53 Duo Jet. Look at that. So old style pick guard as back in that day. Uh, this, this guitar features TV Jones pickups. Again, a full two inch deep body, heavily chambered. It's extremely light. Uh, the compensated uh, aluminum Bigsby bridge. Uh, again, with the knobs, they weren't, pu they weren't putting G's on them or arrows on them back in the day. We embraced that and it cre recreated it as close as possible the way they made them back in the day. We, we have a concept about, we're going to do vintage stuff, we do vintage uh, where applicable. Whereas the tremolo arm back in that 1953, they used to snap. And so, rather than getting guitars returned to us with snapped arms, this would be a 53 uh, duo jet where someone replaced it with a steel arm. And that's what this is all about. Another gorgeous old school looking guitar, great rock and roll guitar.